Good day, my name is Blue Suit, and today I'll be covering my review of the Early Access 2D monster taming and breeding Japanese role-playing game that is Monster Crown. In Monster Crown, you play as a young person in a dark world filled with humans and monsters, and it's up to you to make pacts with the monsters to defeat an evil, young, power-hungry woman and to restore the balance of Crown Island. The story is already far more engaging and interesting than what I've come to expect from the genre. Crown Island's history is full of sadistic rulers and heroic saviors alike, except here they aren't watered down for a G-rated audience. Monster Crown doesn't at all shy away from murder, torture, and explicit language. It had so much more impact coming from a game like this, where the expectation is that everyone's going to be friendly towards you. It's not gratuitous violence by any means, but a more realistic self-realization that this is a world where people use fighting monsters to solve their problems, and the inhabitants of Crown Island reflect that. Heavily inspired by Game Boy Advance era Pokemon titles, Monster Crown has you battling and taming monsters along your adventure, but it also pulls from the Dragon Warrior monster series and allows you to breed them, giving the game hordes more monsters than any other single monster taming game. There are 200 base monsters to capture using packs, and you can breed and fuse them with each other to get new species, which the developer Studio Aurum claims is over a thousand monsters. Evolving monsters is also different in Monster Crown, but not necessarily better. Instead of most monsters evolving once or twice, only a minority of monsters will actually evolve, and it will happen only once. The way it works is that there are rare evolutionary items. If you use it on the right monster during battle, it'll evolve until the end of battle, at which point the item will be returned to you. Or you can use it outside of battle for a permanent evolution at the permanent cost of the item. Personally, I like the change. While I don't think it's any better or worse than the genre standard, it's a breath of fresh air to finally have some innovation in these type of games. In the game's actual combat, Monster Crown mostly toes the line, but with a small handful of differences. Among the things that I liked were that at the start of every battle you get to choose which monster you want to send out, not just whichever is first in your lineup. I also like that sharing experience with your party is on by default and you can toggle it on or off whenever you want. However, there were a few things that weren't so great either. For one, there were only five types in the game, which seems low considering how many monsters there are. And the biggest defender, the synergy system. As you swap out your monsters in battle, you can gain synergy to use special, more powerful attacks. In theory, it's meant to marginalize the free hit your opponents get when swapping monsters, but in practice, it takes several swaps to get even one level of synergy, and it's not really worth taking all those free hits. Monster Crown is, however, an early access title, and the synergy system is clearly not finished. Speaking of which, there are a few early access related issues that players should be aware of before picking up Monster Crown. For starters, there are quite a few menu and dialogue issues with the game. For example, when presented with any choice, you're given the options yes, no, and cancel, even though no and cancel have the same result. This does not affect the game's value, or the amount of fun that you're going to have with it. But I think it's important that you know that little errors and typos like these show up pretty frequently. The other, much more important issue, is the amount of content that's actually in the game right now. Currently, only about one third of the full story is available, and it ends right as you gain the ability to start breeding. Only about a third of the full roster of monsters are available, and only about half of the game's world is currently explorable. However, even with so much of the game missing, there's still so much greatness here that it's still worth picking up. Right now you can pick up Monster Crown on Steam for $15, and as an early access title, it's already almost worth that much. There is finally a monster collecting game that isn't trying to be cute and adorable all the time, but instead balancing it out by also being dark and punishing. Like when you faint, you lose your entire inventory. It's an absolutely wonderful game, and as it continues to develop, it will be worth more. But right now, with what the game currently is, I'm valuing Monster Crown at $14 and I highly recommend it to fans of the early generations of Pokemon who are searching for a more adult storyline. I hope you enjoy this review of Monster Crown. Come see me on Twitch where you can watch our reviews in progress five nights a week. As always, don't forget to like, subscribe, and let me know in the comments what you thought about it. Until next time, peace!